mommy in the cockpit. So it's nothing serious. Let's get on with the cleaning up. What time it is now? About 9.20. The morning really flying fast. It's so late already. You think I could get a few things in town this afternoon? Yes, yeah, surely. I myself have to pick up a few things at the supermarket. I'll give you some money after lunch. Okay. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Wells. I've called back, as I said. Did you check at your husband's office? Hmm? What did they say? You're right. He isn't there. I know what I'm talking about. For months now, I've been seeing them together. Why you didn't tell me this before? Who are you in any case? Who I am does not matter. But it's a disgrace for a man that age to be going around with a young girl. Young girl? Mm, well, not too young. But this girl couldn't be more than about 24. She's dark brown in complexion, with large eyes, hair curly all over, beautiful, smooth skin, and she laughs a lot. How is she dressed? Well, I, I, I couldn't see a whole body, you know, only the top. It is short sleeves, bluish blouse with tropical fruits. Ah, uh, uh, no, yes, uh, a V-neck. But what you were doing there? Well, I went up the hill to test drive a new car, and I saw him there. I don't know whether to thank you or not. The whole thing might be one big fat lie. I don't tell lies, Mrs. Wells. Look, I advise you not to panic. Handle the situation tactfully. It might be all your fault. My fault? How? Mm, well, you may not be showing him enough love. A big man 50 years of age wants to be shown love? I don't believe in all that punk. Well, Mrs. Wells, that is your problem. I'll ring you back sometime and have a chat, okay? Thank you very much, Mr. My name does not matter. Do I know you? No, we've never spoken. But I've seen you several times. Always with your husband. Well, I must go now. I'm sorry if I've caused you any worry, but it's better you know where you stand with him. Thank you very much. Bye. Shirley, your father, your father. What is it? What happened to him? Nothing. Nothing happened to him. But what's wrong? He's going wrong with a woman. What? Daddy, don't cry, Mommy, please. I know it will hurt very much, but it's not your fault. I cried for the mistakes I made all these years. And the reason I wanted her to come back here, Shirley, was a selfish one. What do you mean? Well, I secretly suspected that your father was carrying on since you left. And I thought that when you came back here, he might have come to his senses and realized he has a daughter your age. She's a young woman he is with. That is what them old men like these days. <laughs> Shirley, uh, just ring the office and find out if he's there. Speak to him and tell him I called earlier, but that he was not in. And that I wanted him to bring home some party ice cubes when he come in. That is all. Mr. Wells, please. Hold on a minute, please. Hello. Wells here. Daddy, this is Shirley. Mommy rang about 9.30 and you were not in the office yet. What happened? Oh, that car again. I had some trouble. I, I shut down on the road. Coil trouble this time. Mommy wants you to buy some party ice cubes when you're coming home for lunch. Okay, Shirley, I'll bring it. Anything else? No, that's all. Have a good day, Daddy. Bye. Thank you, Shirley. Bye. So he in the office, that means... He said the coil of the car gave trouble and caused him to shut down on the road. He'll bring the ice cubes. Mommy... 
You think he talking the truth? Why you should lie, Shirley? If he going wrong with another woman, he go try to cover up. You may be right. Since your daddy reached 50, he's a changed man. I saw it coming before. He was always complaining that all his life, he lived the way how other people wanted him to live. In all these 26 years of marriage life, he lived the way he thought a married man should live. But from then on, he was going to live life his way. Surely, he never tells me where he's going. He say he's his own boss. Daddy is so well respected everywhere. I hope he doesn't make a fool of himself. When people find out, he might feel ashamed. But we both know that in our hearts, we have been finished a long time ago. Mommy, always find that you and Daddy just going through this marriage for the sake of, what shall I say, society. You all are more like business partners, not husband and wife. He sleep in the back bedroom and you sleep in the front. And that going on for years. But we still together. Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Wells of Apple Blossom Avenue in Cascade. <laughs> what a joke. We smiled and held each other's hand in public. When we went to shop, he held my arm. And every Sunday, we were in church together. When Pantin was made Archbishop, we were there. When your father received the medal from the president from, for his good services to the community last year, I was there most present. He kissed me publicly. And our pictures were on the Guardian and on the Express. But in my heart and his, we knew that this was just a show for the rest of the world. When we were together alone, we sort of felt a hatred for each other. It is difficult to explain, Shirley, but you wouldn't know the sorrow that is in my heart. I used to feel the tension between you and Daddy mounting. At times, I was afraid that he might move across to your bedroom in the night and strangle you, or you might throw boiling water on him. It awful, but he thought actually came to me once or twice. You see, our spirits were struggling to be free. He could have been blissfully happy with another woman, and I with another man. Yet everybody think you all are happily married. Everybody seems to be fooling somebody, if you really think of it. I, for one, wait. I hear like it's somebody outside. Good morning, Miss Carol Parker. Can you tell me why you are so late? I'm not feeling well at all. So instead of staying home, I said I'd come and help you with the ironing. That's very nice of you. How long have you been working here now? Um, about six months, Mrs. Wells. Well, when you were here last time, my daughter was not here. Now, between my daughter and myself, we can easily do the ironing. It's not much, really. You're fine with them. Well, uh, not exactly. If I need you again, I'll send for you. Well, Mrs. Wells, you can't dismiss me just like that. Yes, of course. I shall pay you for this month, although you have done very little. Shirley, uh, bring for me four Fridays at $75. That is $300. You'll find it in my little drawer of my bedhead. Excuse me, Mrs. Wells. Your daughter used to live in Calabar, Charlie, with a mister named Danny King. What? How you know that? I just live down the road, and I see her and Danny pass in front of me plenty times. Carol, I must thank you for the time that you have worked here. That's all right. I get in a better job. Where are you going to work? In an office, Mrs. Wells. I didn't know you had qualifications for office jobs. Thanks, Mrs. Wells. But to tell you the truth, I have no qualification. But a friend trying to get a work for me in his office a long time now. What are you going to do? Just put some papers in a cabinet. What office is this? You sure you want to know, Mrs. Wells? What office is this, Carol? Gee, good man and company. You're not serious? You look upset, Mrs. Wells. Tell me, who promised to give you a job in that office? You know, Mrs. Wells. Tell me before you leave, Carol. Who promised you a job in that office? 
But you know already? My husband? Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Mr. Gray. Wait, Carl. If he promised you a job in an office a long time now, why didn't you take it instead of coming here, ironing in and other little odd jobs for me? I wanted to work for you. You don't owe me anything. You work for me, and I pay you, and that's that. I feel sorry for you. Goodbye, Mrs. Wells. Sorry for me? Wait, Carl. I want to ask you a straightforward question, and I want a straightforward answer. I'll try. I, is my husband friendly with you? You think so? Yes, I think so. You might be so right. Goodbye, Mrs. Wells. <laughs> Goodbye, Carl. How you like that? She's very confident for one thing. But I could see she did not want to come out openly with it. I don't know what to do about all this. Just forget about it and go on as usual. I have been running away from the truth far too long. I think for once I better face it. If that is the way you feel, go ahead. You do what your conscience tells you. When your father comes home for lunch, we are going to have it out. In that case, Mommy, I better leave and do my shopping. No, Shirley. You must remain here to be a witness. Because this really is the end. You know what hurts me more? This girl saying that she feels sorry for me. Lord, look what I come to now. Your father really gone too far now? Mommy, I don't like this at all. Somebody will get annoyed and you never can tell. One of us has to go. Either your father or me. I can't put up with this deceitfulness anymore. Please, Mommy, I prefer not to be here when Daddy comes for lunch. No, Shirley. You must remain. You are no longer a child. And your presence here will make us think of our age and the wisdom that is to go with the years. But believe me, if your father wants to go and live with that girl, he can go. But he's not going to stay here, carrying on black is white, and having everybody feeling sorry for his poor old wife. Okay, if he leaves, what will you do? If I know for sure he's living with that girl, I'll divorce him. Do you know how much talk that would cause? But we have been divorced in our hearts already. Now people will know that's all. Okay, whatever you want, ma'am. 